Hello everyone, Dr. Hasbullah here and in this video, we are going to be looking at internal flow, specifically flow in pipe. And for fluids that are flowing, usually there are two types of flow. First is called lamina flow and the second one is called turbulent flow. Now let's take a look at how lamina and turbulent flow looks inside a pipe. For lamina flow, and if you have the pipe that looks something like this, Okay, and then the fluid is flowing from left to right. Okay, and if I put a die inside that pipe, the die looks something like this. Okay, so it's flowing from left to right very smoothly. Now, let's take a look at what happens when the flow is turbulent. Okay, now let me draw a similar pipe. And now let's say you have water flowing from left to right. And for turbulent flow, the die is going to look something like this. Now this flow does not look smooth at all like a lamina flow. So turbulent flow is more chaotic. And the reason why we need to differentiate between lamina and turbulent is because the way you treat it in your analysis later is going to be very different between lamina and turbulent flow. But as an engineer, we need to find a parameter that defines what is lamina and what is turbulent flow. And that parameter is called Reynolds number. So Reynolds number... is given as rho times velocity times diameter of the pipe divided by mu or kinematic viscosity. And we also know that mu divided by rho is equal to nu or kinematic viscosity. So the Reynolds number becomes velocity times diameter divided by nu. Okay, so the diameter here is called the characteristic length. For internal flow, specifically for flow in pipe, the characteristic length is diameter of the pipe. But for external flow, for example, the characteristic length is going to be different. And to differentiate between lamina and turbulent flow by using Reynolds number is that for Reynolds number that is less than 2000, that is called lamina flow. And for turbulent flow, the Reynolds number is greater than 4000. So in between, between Reynolds number, between 2000 to 4000, this is called the transition flow. Right, so Reynolds number that is less than 2000 is lamina flow. Between 2000 and 4000 is transition flow, where the flow change from lamina to turbulent, and greater than 4000 is turbulent flow. In engineering application, it is very likely that you are going to deal with the flow with a very high Reynolds number. So it is almost certain that the flow is going to be turbulent. But still, depending on the case, you might sometimes encounter lamina flow. But generally for flow involving engineering applications, the flow is likely to be turbulent. Now I mentioned before that the reason why you need to differentiate between lamina and turbulent because it's going to make a difference in the way we do analysis later. Now what are the analysis that we want to do for the flow in pipe? Now imagine that you have two pipes to deliver water. Okay, so pipe A will deliver water from Johor to Malacca. And the distance from Johor to Malacca is about 200 km. And pipe B will deliver water from Johor to Terengganu. And the distance, let's say, is about 500 km. Now, if these two pipes, pipe A and pipe B, is to deliver water at the same flow rate to Malacca and to Terengganu, you would expect that the pump that is needed to deliver water to Terengganu is going to be much larger than to deliver water to Malacca. Now, why do we need bigger pump to cover the greater distance? So, even though the flow rate is the same, when the pipe is longer, then there are more frictional losses inside the pipe. So, to compensate for that losses, you need a bigger pump for pipe B. So, if you have a flow in pipe, it is very important to determine the losses because of the friction or the length of the pipe. And the loss that is because of the pipe length is called major loss. Right, there are two types of losses that is involved in pipe flow. First, we call it major loss. 
right? And this is because of the length of the pipe. So longer pipe will have greater major loss. And the second one is called minor losses, right? And minor loss is because of the fittings of the pipe. Okay, let's say your pipe goes through a bend or the pipe goes through valve or the pipe goes through an elbow. So this is because of the fittings. Right? So the more fittings that you have, the more losses that you are going to have. Now, even though it's called major and minor, it does not necessarily mean that major loss is always going to be greater than minor loss. For some cases, when you have too many pipe fittings, then minor loss could be greater than major loss. Right, so now let's take a look at how to find major loss inside the pipe first. So major loss inside the pipe is shown as HL and the equation for HL is FL over D V square over 2G. And this equation is called Darcy Weisbach equation. Right, so this equation is very important. It is going to be used to determine what is the major loss for a pipe flow. Now let's take a look at some of the terms that is inside this major loss. First of all, major loss is represented as HL and H is height. So you can also call this head loss and the unit should be in meter. So first of all, F is what we call friction factor. And of course, later I'm going to show you how to find this friction factor, right? And L is the length of the pipe. D is, of course, diameter of the pipe. V is velocity of the flow inside the pipe. And as usual, G is gravity. Now, I believe that you are familiar with length, velocity, gravity, and diameter, but this might be the first time you hear about friction factor. So friction factor is defined by Reynolds number and also relative roughness. So it depends on Reynolds number and relative roughness. Reynolds number, as I told you before, is rho times velocity times diameter divided by kinematic viscosity. And relative roughness is E divided by D. D is diameter, of course. And E is roughness or surface roughness. So E will depend on the types of surface. For example, if you have stainless steel, the E is going to be different than wrought iron, for example. And the way that we are going to find friction factor is through a diagram that is called a Moody diagram. Okay, so Moody diagram. Right, and this is what Moody diagram looks like. You can find this diagram in your textbook and also you can just Google Moody diagram and this figure will pop up. So you see here that on the left hand side of the vertical axis here we have friction factor, right? And then on the X axis is Reynolds number. And if you notice the Reynolds number is in logarithmic scale, right? And then on the right hand side of the vertical axis you have the relative roughness and this is what E is, right? So for example, if you have wrought iron, the E is, the surface roughness is 0.046 millimeter, right? Remember the unit is millimeter. And for cast iron, for example, it's a little bit rough than wrought iron, so it is 0.26 millimeter. And I've told you before that between laminar flow and turbulent flow, the way that we are going to conduct analysis is going to be different. Now you can see it very clearly in this Moody chart is that if the flow is laminar, it becomes very easy to use this chart. It is simply 64 divided by Reynolds number. So that will be your friction factor. But 
For turbulent flow, we are going to have to learn how to use this diagram. And I think it will be easier if I show you how to use this diagram when we do an example in the next video. So that's it from me for now. And I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye.